So now let's see how MHC proteins work. We look at their structure and how they influence the T cells. So let's start our discussion. There are two main structurally and functionally distinct classes of MHC proteins. Class 1 MHC proteins which present foreign peptides to cytotoxic T cells and class 2 proteins MHC proteins which present foreign peptides to helper T cells. Here in the diagram you can see that these MHC proteins are displaying a foreign protein fragment which can or may or may not be foreign in origin. It is being displayed by these cells and T cells can recognize that. Class 1 MHC proteins are present on the surface of all nucleated cells, whereas class 2 proteins are present only on the surface of antigen presenting cells, which we defined as B cells, we said macrophages, and also dendritic cells. The structure of MHC class 1 and 2 molecules is similar. They are heterodimers made up of two different polypeptide chains. These chains have, except for the alpha chain of class 1 protein, the other MSC proteins have extracellular domain, an intracellular domain, and a transmembrane domain which is embedded in the plasma membrane. The alpha chain of class 1 MSC proteins is a small peptide which is only present in the extracellular region of the cell. So, and also the N terminus of these proteins are present in the extracellular space. Here you can see the grooves, these proteins, these MSC proteins form grooves on which peptides can bind. These peptides can be foreign or self in origin. We have said that diversity is very important for immune system. B cells and T cells manufacture TCRs and BCRs which are very very diverse and we saw that diversity is basically result of gene rearrangement. MSC proteins also need diversity to be able to capture different types of protein fragments or peptide fragments and display them on the surface of the cell. However, these proteins do not follow the same strategy as B cells and T cells. First of all, these I have to tell you the number of genes. There are three genes for MSC class 1 molecules A, B and C which are shown right here and also three for the MSC class 2 molecules DP, DQ and DR. So these genes are present on human chromosome number 6. These are also called HLA genes, human leukocyte antigen genes, which is another name for MHC genes. So here you can see that these genes, they are not present in segments, gene segments like antibody genes are or TCR genes are. However, the diversity comes because these genes are very polymorphic. It is very rare for two unrelated individuals to have identical set of MHC proteins. That is one. The other is that these, we are just looking at one chromosome here. Remember, humans are diploid, so one chromosome is paternal, other is maternal. So we have basically six genes for MHC class 1 molecule, which can class MHC, which can form class 1 MHC molecules and that is where the variety comes. Additionally, as I'll show you later, that these MHC proteins, they are not as specific as the antibodies or TCRs. So additionally, at least class 2, we, as we saw that there are alpha and beta uh, 2 chains that form the antigen binding site. So combination of paternal and maternal alpha and beta gene products can also generate diversity, additional diversity. Person makes a small number of MHC proteins which are able to represent uh, foreign peptides from almost any protein source to the T cells. 
MSC groove can accommodate of class 1 molecules can accommodate a porn peptide or a self peptide which is about 8 to 10 amino acids long. In extended, these peptide fragments are presented in extended form, so they are not folded. We have talked about protein folding. The strategy of these molecules is to bind peptide fragments at their constant region or the backbone region of the, the peptide. So they do not recognize the variable parts or the R groups of the amino acids. They recognize the constant parts of the amino acids, the amino acid backbone. That binds the invariant pocket at one end of the groove where it is a carboxyl group and the other invariant pocket of MHC class 1 molecules bind the amino group on the other invariant pocket. So as I've mentioned, these pockets recognize peptide backbone features common to all peptides. So this is how MHC molecules are able to grab, bind, and display proteins of peptide fragments which can be very very diverse. Here is class MSC class 1 molecule. Please notice that here as I've mentioned before that the binding of this protein is basically by the protein backbone and that backbone also includes the minor terminus right here and the carboxy terminus right here and these termini bind the invariant pocket which is for example right here formed by the MSC protein molecule itself and the, what you cannot see is imagine that the side chains of these amino acids or the R groups are sticking out of your screen. So these side groups are basically are the molecules that interact with the TCR. In case of MSC class 1 molecule it will be the cytotoxic T cells. MSC class 2 molecules can accommodate longer peptides which are usually 13 to 17 amino acids long. Peptides again in this case they are not bound by the end however they are still held in the groove by the invariant pockets which are present on the surface of MSC molecule and again they recognize the conserved part of the amino acid backbone. Again MSC2 molecule using this strategy can also bind a large variety of different polypeptides about 13 to 17 amino acids long. So these MSC molecules basically are displaying peptide fragments of the cell on their surface. Peptide, these peptide fragments can be from two different sources. Either they are product of normal proteins within our cells that get degraded which is a normal process or they can be foreign in origin. Think of it in this way. MSC class 1 molecules are going around looking for enemy forces inside the cell. Antibodies cannot enter the cell. However, the cells have evolved strategies to display proteins on their surface. So think of it this way that terrorists have invaded and they are hiding inside the houses. So army now has a task, they, they don't have the army, they don't have the site where the enemy is present. The way this works is these, for, for example, we can think of it this way, that the house owners or the house residents raise different flags. So all the house residents which do not have terrorist groups inside that house are, for example, displaying the white flags. So our immune system, our army will see that and they'll say these are the, our normal cells. Any house that is displaying the red flag will be attacked by our immune system and the whole cell will be destroyed including the pathogen that is that was hiding in the cell. Uh, think of it as uh, for example collateral damage that you have to sacrifice your own cell to get rid of the intracellular pathogen which is only possible because with the help of these MHC molecules.